So thank you for joining. In this video, we are going to compare Excel versus Power BI. Now that's the most commonly asked question I get during my sessions. First things first, Excel and Power BI both are from Microsoft and they are not competitors. It's not a replacement to each other. In fact, Power BI is an adjunct enhancement over what Excel can do. So if you ask me which one to use, I would say both. You should learn both and then use the right one in the right place. As we go along, you will understand the differences as well as similarities and then you can use that knowledge to your advantage. So now let's understand the data life cycle. There are three steps broadly. First of all, we have to get the data from somewhere. Once it is there, you need to clean it up and shape it and then you can analyze and visualize it. All these three steps are represented in Excel as well as in Power BI. Now, when it comes to Excel as well as Power BI, the import and cleanup component is common. Many people don't know this because today, when you import data into Excel and try to clean it up, what are the common methods we use? Well, many people do it manually or you may use formulas or you may even write some macros or record some macros and program them. All these three methods may still be working for you, but they are absolutely outdated. Both Excel and Power BI has a very powerful import and data cleanup engine, which is called Power Query, which you must use. In Excel, you go to Data tab and go to Get and Transform. There you get lots of data sources and import and cleanup capability of Power Query. Exactly in the same way, when you go to Power BI Desktop, you have Get Data as well as Import and clean up part which is transform. So get and transform both are represented in both places. Now the difference comes in the number of sources you can have. Excel has around 42 data sources, whereas Power BI has 140 plus data sources as of today. More will get added as we go along, but it is very important that you at least go through the list of all data sources so that you know what is available. You may not ever use all the data sources, but it is possible that some of that you are already doing in a haphazard or roundabout manner by exporting to CSV and importing into Excel. If you find the data source in the list, that process becomes much more streamlined and accurate. We will not go into details of uh, all kinds of cleanup you can do, but just to give you an idea, here are the various types of data cleanup operations you can do using Power Query and the syntax and the methodology and the user interface is exactly same whether it is Excel or Power BI. Once the data is imported, the difference starts. Now the question is, where do you import data? In Excel, typically we import data into Excel sheet and that is something which has been going on for 30 years, but that's not the optimal way. I'm sure you have faced situations where you have large amount of data and Excel becomes extremely slow. So you should not do that. We have something called data model, which is a database within Excel. In Power BI, exactly the same data model exists. So when you import data, you can directly put it in data model, whether it is Excel or it is Power BI. So when you import data using Power Query, in case of Excel, you have a choice between Excel sheet or the data model. Whereas in Power BI, there is only data model. And for large data sets, it's the best thing to do to import data into data model. It will solve all your large and slow Excel file problems once and for all. Once the data is inside, then we want to analyze it and visualize it. That is where the difference between Excel and Power BI comes. As you know, in Excel, we have pivot tables where we drag drop things and we have pivot charts. Now, something similar does exist in Power BI, but when it comes to Power BI, you get 40 plus default visuals and there is a large ecosystem of hundreds of visuals available for you to choose from. So here is the difference. Let's take this data. We have uh, these columns, which is basically a transactional kind of data. And we have every row showing some transaction which happened. Now I've imported the same data in Excel and in Power BI. Now in Excel, if I wanted to create a dashboard, I would have created multiple pivot tables and charts. And that's about it. Now let's do the same thing in Power BI. And this is what you can come up with very, very quickly. Now you can see that these charts I could have made in Excel as well. Yes, but here when we create charts in Power BI or visuals as they are called, they are not just independent charts, they are connected to each other. So if I click on anything which is plotted, that becomes an interactive filter. 
and you can understand your data much better. The interactivity is the key difference between visuals of Excel and visuals of Power BI. Now lastly, there is a set of AI visuals which are available in Power BI. For example, here is a simple line chart. It shows that there was a significant drop in revenue in this month. Now in Excel, if you want to know why, you will have to create another report manually to explain that decrease. Whereas in Power BI, you right click on that point and choose explain the decrease. This is an AI based visual. So it looks at what is plotted. It also looks at other data columns or dimensions which you have and actually creates multiple charts to explain why the revenue decreased. So rather than saying I'll get back to you and send the report tomorrow, you can actually answer the questions there and then. It's a very, very powerful feature. Similarly, we have multiple other AI based visuals in Power BI. There's one feature which is common in both which does use AI, which is called Q&A. So you can ask a question in Excel, Excel will create report for you and same thing in Power BI. But the sophistication with which Power BI does it is much better. So if you want to use Q&A, use the Power BI version. Lastly, once the report is ready, the next step is to share it with other people. In Excel, what do we do? We send the file as attachment or if you have a file on OneDrive or SharePoint, you can send a link. Now, whatever I have been showing in Power BI is the free version of Power BI, which is called Power BI Desktop. You can just download and use it for life. It is completely free. The problem is when you have the file stored with all the analysis, it creates a file called PBIX file like XLSX. Now you want to share the report like Excel, you can send the file or you can share a link. The problem in either case is when you send the report, people can see your underlying data as well and they can manipulate it. You don't want that to happen. So if you go to Power BI Pro, which is the paid subscription, you can publish that report on the browser and then send only the link to the report where people can interact with the report, but they will not be able to look at the data or manipulate the report beyond what you have created. So broadly, these are the similarities and differences between Excel and Power BI. Lot of work which you are doing in one can be used in the other without any change. And that's a good news because based on your circumstances, you can choose the right tool in the right place. In the upcoming videos, we will cover individual component of these in more detail. But in the meantime, do subscribe to my channel, share it and click on the bell icon. So that's it for now. Thank you.